Welcome to Home Team Advantage. I'm Gary Gimbetti along with Mike Egan, and uh, we're here to discuss some high school sports. Anything else? Some professional come sports, on. yes. Yep. But I, you wanted to give out a special uh, announcement here, so we'll let you do that. Oh, I just, we're just going to wish uh, our competition over there at USA Radio. You know, they have a choice. They can either listen to us and watch us or listen to Scott Hansen. His birthday was yesterday, so we're just going <laughs> to wish a happy birthday to Scott Hansen. But he's got a radio face. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, you're giving us a lot of credit. But no, happy belated birthday we were built to Scott for TV. Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we noticed we have some competition too on the air because oh, the, young, the, kids, the young kids are here. What? Wyatt Collins and Ian Larrabee running yeah. a show called what? Anchor Down. Anchor Down. Anchor Down. So there yeah, okay. you're getting a high school perspective from yeah. high school students and athletes. Yeah. So Well, they were on a TV when we walked in this morning, there must be a replay of it. I said, boy, those are some good looking kids. <laughs> <laughs> his wife looked at us and went, yep, they sure are. <laughs> uh, a lot better looking than we are. So uh, give them a check their show out uh, if you have the opportunity. Maybe they'll invite us on their show. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. To get some perspective of what it's like to See be what on what it's air. really like, yep. For what, how many years now? Uh, it's been. Wow. Six? Six, I think. Oh, it seems longer than that, yeah. boy. But I think wasn't it before COVID? Oh, easily, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. And we, I mean, yeah. we do shows from Florida. We go all over. Oh yeah, I've had you. Yeah, I've had you on the phone. You've been down hunting snakes and yeah. and had the opportunity. That's the to... best I ever looked on TV. When I was on the phone. <laughs> With that snake wrapped around your throat. Yeah. <laughs> but um, hey, we have uh, swimming. Girls had their sections mm -hmm. last Thursday and it's prelims and then Friday or Saturday they had their finals and uh, Rock Ridge came, became away with a team title which was not unexpected, put it that way. And, uh, but the, the, the most surprising thing was Masabi East finishing second. Uh, they swam really, uh, I hate to use adjectives like really well, but they did, they swam well. Uh, beat Grand Rapids, which took third, and then yep. Hibbing took fourth. But Hibbing did swim pretty well. They didn't. They only got actually one swimmer to state. Rainy Gibson won the uh, section title in the 100 butterfly swimming. I think a one minute point seven four seconds, and she had at the prelims had previously beat the uh, old re old team record at like 101 something. And then, uh, which was Luciano Napolitano had that record, but I, I remember the name. I don't remember the year. Okay. So she broke that record, and then Saturday she came back and shattered her, her own record. Own record. Yeah. So they're hoping that they, she can do that down at the state meet, uh, which she'll start swimming in the prelims at noon on Friday. So uh, at the Gene K. Freeman Aquatic Center on the University of Minnesota campus. So good luck to Rainey down there. Um, and I, I have to say, we have to give, give a shout out too to Evie Renskers because she's a freshman and she, she won the diving title at the section meet on Saturday for the first hitting diver to do that since 2009. And that was Jade Anderson who won the title mm -hmm. that year. Unfortunately, <laughs> she's, she injured herself uh, on Sunday, and now she can't dive at state, right. which I asked Vans about. Uh, does the fifth place diver then get a uh, get a chance to go down? Oh, okay. But he said no because oh. not evidently it doesn't work that way. So, but un un you know, unfortunate for her, but that doesn't take away the fact that she did win the section title, yep. and as a freshman, that's a heck of an accomplishment. Yep, and yeah, it's. Well, Works well for the future. Yes. Yeah, so, so, um, so that kind of just wraps it up. I see um, in football, Esco got beat. Esco got beat in the, in the quarterfinals. Yeah. You got to kind of wonder how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the last couple of nights, if you've had a chance to watch WDIO, that they, they've run two specials now: one on their quarterback and one on the uh, the other All-State kid. That and and. Is he is he going to Minnesota or is he got going somewhere else now? 
Well, well I, he, throughout Ohio State. Well, I heard he's been getting offers from other schools, but I know that I think they want him at the U as a safety, okay. if I'm not mistaken. But I don't, you know, they had national letter signings this past week, and I didn't see him signing. No, anything. I, I don't think officially he has signed anywhere. Yeah. So we'll have to see where that ends up. But it, it's just hard to believe that uh, Esco was so dominant all year, and they ended up getting beaten. State quarterfinal. I like to know. See, those are the games you want to watch. Right. Nevis beat him? Well, no, I, I can't remember the school that beat him, but Nevis did beat Mountain Iron Buell. Okay. In the nine oh, man. Maybe. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah okay. nine man. Uh, Nevis got beat then after that. Well, no, they haven't played yet. I think Where am they, I? What world am I in? Yeah, you're. <laughs> <laughs> unless you can look into the future oh. <laughs> and know what happens already. But no, I think. I think though the semifinal games start Friday, and then they run Saturday as well, and then obviously next weekend. I think I don't know maybe because they had that little break in between last year where yeah. they went uh, one week after Thanksgiving weekend will be the finals down at the U.S. Bank. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little comment here, and I'll probably get in trouble for this one. You know I don't usually do this. <laughs> no, get in trouble. Never. Um, <laughs> It's great to see these young athletes signing their letter of content to go to a college. What drives me wild is down, and it's like southern part of the country where SEC and ACC, you know, where they make this big deal about this kid. They put all their hats in front of him, and then he picks the hat he's going. To, and the next thing you know, the mother's upset because she took the wrong school. And I just let the kid sign the thing and get it over. Why? Do they, and they put it on ESPN. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I'll just say we had uh, we had one girl here, Ani Bolbin, signed yep. a national letter of intent to play at Northern State for softball. Uh, Tressa Baumgart of Chisholm signed her letter of intent to play basketball at uh, Moorhead. Um, and then I have one coming up on the 21st over in Nashua. Caitlin Olson is going to sign to run, but I can't remember where right now. Oh, okay. I don't. So I. I don't, I, but I will know obviously on the 21st when I go over there to right. do a story. So she, her brother Daniel signed one like last year to run somewhere. I don't know if she's going to the same, maybe she's going to the same school, but oh, okay. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll find out next week when I go over there. So, but that's a seven o'clock signing. I can't believe they're not doing it during well. the school day. Yeah. It's hard to believe they're signing at seven, but I suppose that's when they can get everybody gathered around yeah. and make it official. So. Well, good. Well, winter sports has started. Girls hockey played. Beat uh, your Rock favorite Ridge. team over there. Yeah. No, don't even go there. <laughs> um, they beat Rock Ridge four to two. They had. Uh, it was nice because I mean, on the penalty kill, Hibbing was three for three, and on the power play, they were one for one. That's right. They scored four goals. They scored four <laughs> goals. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm making I'm making light of this. I'm not being. Don't take me seriously, but. Those four goals are probably more than Hibbing scored at the end of, I couldn't tell you how many games last no. season. They had trouble scoring goals last no. year. So if they can do that, they get, you know, two to three goals a game, they'll be fine. Right. Good. Yeah, they will. Um, because now they play. So now we'll see the rubber will meet the road tomorrow because South St. Paul comes up here for a game on Friday. Okay. And then they play Rock Ridge on Saturday. Again. Yeah, well, no, South St. Paul is oh, coming nice. up for the oh, weekend. Okay. They'll play Rock Ridge on Saturday. South St. Paul is usually a state tournament team, yeah. so we'll see. I mean, Hibbing's young. I haven't done that that preview story yet with Coach Hayduk, but uh, they had quite a few eighth graders, like four seniors, maybe six juniors, and then the rest are sophomores or younger. So we'll, we'll see how they develop as the year goes on, and uh, hopefully – you know, I mean, obviously Proctor Hermantown's going to be the class of right. the section. So, I mean, they're going to have to get up, jump that high to get out of here. But we'll see. Never know in hockey, right? No, you don't. So. Grace McDowell played a heck of a game. I know she gave up two goals, uh, two nice shots. But uh, I think uh, Scott, Mamie Scott and Natalie Bergman had two beautiful shots that got above her. Of course, I know, you know, no, nah, I won't even go there either. But. Um, so, but otherwise, she controlled the rebounds. 
didn't give out much in front of the net. The Hibbing's defensive scheme that day, that night, was fantastic. They blocked shots. They got sticks on shots. Good. They covered up in front of the net, and that was a, it was a, the perfect recipe to get a to get, get a, a win. Victory. And they and they got the four goals. I think Pinella, well, Adi Bovin got one of them. Pinella Rewerts got one or got two, and uh, Kendall Gustafson. After Rock Ridge made it three to two in uh, what you know, kind of at the beginning of the f- third period, Kendall about uh, just less than thirty seconds later intercepted a, a clearing attempt at the blue line, skated into the top of the slot, and then fired one nice. crossbar bar down on uh, their goalie and gave them that two goal lead, and they pretty much cruised from there. Nice. So good for them. Uh, boys hockey. I believe has some scrimmages this week, maybe over at Rock and Virginia. So if you want to get over there to see some scrimmaging, I think that's the place to go. So is everything over in Virginia now? Well, I don't. I don't. Why we don't have considered the jewel of the range now? Well, with our school, big fancy school, fancy (laughs) ice arena and convention center, and (laughs) okay. I know we weren't going to mention it. No, right? we weren't going to mention any of that, but okay. that's okay. Um, I don't think our show goes over it. <laughs> no, but I know they do open. I know next week they open with Grand Rapids over there. Uh, and then they have some games, I think, over Thanksgiving weekend. I know the girls hockey team will go to Grand Rapids for two games against White Bear Lake and Blaine in their turkey tournament or Thanksgiving tournament, okay. whatever they call it. So that uh, takes care of that. Girls basketball, I don't not they've started practice. Uh, when they actually play, I don't know yet. But uh, boys basketball and I think wrestling and whatever starts Monday. And then boys swimming will start the week Monday after Thanksgiving. So we'll be up and running. Full speed. <laughs> You'll be up and running. Yeah, there there was hardly any break between yeah. uh, between between seasons this year. Yeah. But that's all right. I like being busy, so I'm not complaining about. But that. really nice if a football team or a, some other team would advance into a, a state tournament. That'd be kind of fun for you to go cover. Oh, that would absolutely would be yeah. fun to cover, and hopefully, you know that that's going to take place. I don't know how long, but yeah, well. Hopefully we're on, we're in the process of moving everything forward and right. uh, getting everything down and we'll have our all area teams coming up here. I we haven't ex- exactly picked who, but those will be coming up shortly. Um, I think for sure Hibbing's getting one player, uh, one athlete of the year. Good. So well, at least we're not getting shut out in that area. Yeah. So. I can imagine. I don't know if you know. Well, no, I'm not going to say what yet because we haven't necessarily confirmed it. But it pretty much between two of us, two of the uh, myself and Ben Ramses, we're uh, we're pretty convinced that we have to pick the right you people. You gonna arm wrestle over that? No, no, no arm wrestling. By the way, we're uh, we're um, sponsored again today by our unofficial sponsor, Caribou Coffee. We do have one sponsor, right? That up up north lettering. <laughs> in Lux Fitness. So okay, we, so it's we, two. Two. Two official. This yeah, is our unofficial. unofficial sponsor. And today we're having oak nog. No, oat. Oat? Oat. Oh, I thought it had something to do with your wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oak nog. <laughs> What happened to pumpkin spice? Uh well, it's, they finally get their shipment. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, today they Oops. had they had my drink there, so I ended oh. up getting it. I can just see you walking through the door, and a girl in the back going, "Hey, Gary, here, get his drink ready." Yeah, well, they should. They they probably know me by heart. I'm surprised they don't know my phone number by heart. Oh, you just don't put it on my tab. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, takes care of high school. College men's basketball team just beat Oak Hills Christian on Tuesday night. Mm. I think 63-61 in overtime. They picked up a win over, um, I'm not gonna remember, oh, Turtle Mountain Community College up in North. They were playing at a tournament in North Dakota up in Bonneau, I believe. That's the name of the school, Turtle Turtle Mountain? Turtle Mountain. Oh, wow. 
They lost to Dakota College in that same tournament the next night. But so far there, they know they've had a, some excitement on the roads, I guess, coming back, I think from when they went to Escanaba, Michigan. They uh, coming back, they must have hit some icy roads. Oh, okay. And uh, had a little bit of an incident there, but nobody was hurt or anything. So, Good. but I'll tell you, I had a. We I went to Duluth not this Tuesday but last Tuesday and over the um, get on 53 just past Half Moon Lake. There's that bridge. Yep. I, I hit ice. Oh yeah. On that and uh, my back end of my truck spun out into the other lane into the you know the passing lane and i thought for sure my wife and i were going over we're, we're going to make it to the next show no, no we might not have made it i don't i you know i feel very fortunate that i don't know if it was due to my driving or if it was due to my the, the safety features in the vehicles but somehow i got straightened out and nice. we hit when we hit the dry pavement i thought we were I thought we were going over. Wow. So uh, I feel fortunate that I'm, you know, I'm not taking this lightly. I'm not taking it for granted, but, you know, you feel fortunate. Because oh, yeah. You don't know. No, oh, believe me, I, I know. So, so um, that was scary. I don't know. I, now I get kind of, I have a fear of going over bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Better stay away from that Mitchell bridge, or the, yeah, the, the well, Mitchell bridge. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I... My, the hygienist I had the other day at the dentist said she did the same thing on a, a bridge on 169. I don't know what bridge it was, but she said that she had an issue with that too. Well, we just gotta love driving in Minnesota. Well, I've never had that happen. Honestly, I've never had that happen, and that was the first time. So that's a clear the shorts kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it or is. Fill the shorts. Fill, yeah, not clear them. Fill them. Yeah. <laughs> so well good we're glad you're okay yeah it's, it was scary but yeah I'm here so and my wife is here and did you get the wife turn you and go Gary I told you not to <laughs> no she she was very impressed with my driving skills oh, well, there you go so because I think it turned the right way was it your driving skills or was it like you said the, the well uh, I don't know but if if it's the if it's the safety it's, things yeah. on the truck they work thank you yeah. for any <laughs> for all vehicles no matter what make or model, thank you for all the safety features because uh, it's it can be a lifesaver for you. So there's remember that. the day when you used to ride in the old station wagon and they had the seat in the back and you're back there looking out the back window. And I never had that. Seat belts and oh, I remember. You had that. a big family, so you probably had a <laughs> yeah, station yeah, wagon. So. Got twelve kids piled into a station <laughs> wagon. <laughs> no safety belts, no. You know, it would amaze me the most though is that my dad's arm could reach all the way to the back of the head. <laughs> and he had to they smack, in the back smack the me in the back of the head. <laughs> Leave your twin sister alone. <laughs> oh man. So And if you weren't the kid that did it, they'll just say we banked that one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well the usual comment was, I might have missed something, so you deserve that one. <laughs> <laughs> At some point yeah. you're gonna deserve it. So no. You do that. I hope. Uh, I hope all the hunters have had success this year. I haven't heard much, but I have a lot of. I a lot of. Oh, shit, can't even talk. Some of the gentlemen that I've talked to said that it's, it's slow. That uh, there's a the wolf population basically has outgrown the deer wolf. population. Yeah, so, except on the highways. Except for on the highways. Yeah, you you yeah. you can hunt down deer with your car or your vehicle. Yeah. And uh, but you can't find them in the woods to put them down. So. But that's uh, he neither here nor there either. Yeah. But, um, so I hope this is the last weekend coming yeah. up for deer hunting, obviously, because Thanksgiving. I can't believe Thanksgiving's here. Already right? here. Yeah, what happened in November? Well I, well, I always figure if you get through November, then you really only have three months of... Hell? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. winter. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, yeah, your first comment was right yeah. about that. So... You know, and maybe December it won't be as cold right away. Maybe we'll get through half of December, and then you only have two and a half months yeah. of extreme cold weather. Yeah. And maybe it won't be that cold this winter. Who knows? I mean, it's you got that weather where it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that. Now let's see. Pros. The pros. We'll start. We'll get in the, into the wild. I guess right now we just somebody Nike. should because they sure don't have anybody well, that wants to play. They, yeah, they, my column the other day was wild. Better get their act together and wake up. Um, if they're 
if that coaching staff, I, I, I'll start with this. Edmonton was three and nine and they fired their coach. Yep. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not a proponent of that, of people losing their jobs. I know these guys will be fine if they lose their jobs. They'll, they'll well, it's find like, other work. It's, but, it's like the NFL, the NHL, you get fired from one job, a week later you're doing some another job somewhere else. I mean, yeah, so they're not going to be hurting for money. But if, if they're trying to send a message to these guys, it's not working. No. And the two trades they made for are these guys even playing? Uh, they're the Bogosian, Zach Bogosian is playing, but he comes in here with a minus 82 yeah. in his for his career, and he's a, he takes penalties, and that's the one thing the Wild surely surely need is somebody who takes more penalties, because yeah. I don't think there's a team in the league that takes more penalties, more penalties than the Wild. And I just don't get it. I mean, it can't be that hard to go out on. That's why I want to get Pat on the show, because I want to get his take on it. But it can't be that hard to not get a penalty. Yeah. Just move your feet and get your stick in the in the right spot, and you, you won't trip guys or right. hook guys. But yeah, they they take the most penalties. Their their penalty kill is last in the league at this point, and Dallas embarrassed them. Yeah, eight to three. So uh, by scoring five power play goals, uh, you got a guy taking a five minute penalty who's one of your penalty killers, uh, and that doesn't help. And their goalies haven't played that well. Well, yeah, I guess that's the one issue. I guess I never touched in the column. What's that? Flurry. Flurry. Well, Flurry's, you know, <laughs> both he and Gustafson are, are above average goaltenders. I, Flurry still is, even though sure. he's almost forty. But you got to have that. Defenseman in front of well, you, that's gonna. Yeah, help. It's, not, it's not always on him. It's yeah. he got no help the other night. No, um, that's for sure. I mean, they're, they're. I don't know their power play. They brought in a new power play coach this year, and looks exactly the same as last <laughs> year. <laughs> what is that pathetic? Well, yeah. If there's a level below pathetic, it's that level. Yeah. I don't know what that would be, but two points out of last place. Well. Yeah. Who's, yeah. On, who's in last place? Blackhawks and Predators. Oh. So, I, you know, something's got to be done. And like I'm saying, that Edmonton coach got fired. Yeah. When's the trade deadline? Well, it's not till February. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got a long, long way to go. Season. And I, you know, you, you told me that the Parisi and Suter contracts are supposed to, all that's supposed to be done after this year. After this year. But I, I, Thinking it's two years, but I don't. So I don't. I, I didn't check up on that. But I hope it's after this year because then he can finally go out. Garen can finally go out and get somebody, get some players to come in and compliment some of these guys he has because this is the same team but, that the last two years they were knocked out yeah. in the first round of the playoffs. But they made such a big deal about this that young kid that was picked number one that goes to the Blackhawk. He's going to turn their team around and and. They're they're below the the wild. Well, they are, but it's not it's not on him. Not, not just one. It's kid, not yeah. him, but it's but he's also he's probably has more goals than Kirill does this year, um, and he's it's his first year. Kirill, that's been the mystery is Caprizo. Why hasn't he jump start? Maybe it takes him a while to get jump started. I don't I don't know. Yeah. He's playing with the same line he's played with the last couple of years, has he not? Yeah. I mean, if they're not hurt, it seems like they're really. Zuccarelli seems like he's hurt all the time, so I don't know what. Uh, it's just a, it's a mind-boggling. Well, we got the Timberwolves. Hey, 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 they won seven in a row. Yeah, the most since I think. Um, and they're two and zero. Spreewell, Garnett, and Cassell were here. Yep. Um, uh, they won two games in that in-house tournament, yeah, so which is a joke. Well, whatever. But maybe they'll get to Las Vegas. Maybe they'll be one of the final eight. To go to Las Vegas. Go to Las Vegas, or the Final Four to go to Las Vegas. Who knows? That would, that would be something. Yeah. That we would, should uh, go out and cover that. No. I think our budget get would handle that. Get yeah. credentials, yeah. bring Ron <laughs> Be one way to get me to Vegas, I think. There you go. But. Oh, Ron's checking his credit card. <laughs> <laughs> HPAT doesn't have a line of credit anywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. that's not going to get us there. But uh, yeah, no, they've uh, Anthony Edwards has played well. Carl Anthony Towns is starting to play well now. He's took him a while to get warmed up. Uh, Gobert. Well, you got to remember he had a year off last year. Yes, he did. So he's got fresh, pretty much fresh legs. Yep. 
Gobert's player Gobert's player in that Gobert's player in Gobert's back to his defensive self yeah. again. I mean, he's blocking shots and he's defending the rim. And he sure took that young kid to the to the net the other night. The big seven foot five kid from Houston. Oh yeah. Or San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Wem Ben Yeah. Yeah. Well, he and Holmgren matched up the other night. Yeah. And uh, it was lackluster to say the least. I don't think either one of them hit double figures, but that's one game. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's there. Those two are going to be special players more than likely. But yeah, I mean, they, but that fight the other night in Golden State, yeah. Draymond Green gets only a five-game suspension for uh, literally choking. Gobert. Gobert. Nate Gobert comes out with a comment. Well, the only reason he did that because he didn't want to play because. <laughs> Seth Curry wasn't playing, so he took a five-game suspension. <laughs> yeah, and who knows how long Steph's going to be out. I don't think he's playing in their next game. So. You know, they wonder why the youth of today have such a trouble. With, is there actually a sports individual you could look up to and appreciate what they do? I mean, I mean seriously, you look yeah, at the I mean, NBA. Is there anybody in the NBA, like the old days, at least, you know, Larry Bird might have been a dirty player, but at least he was – he Fun played. to watch. He, he played. played every night. Yeah. You know, Kevin McHale, uh, or Parrish. Today, is there anybody in the NBA that you could look up to that isn't a thug <laughs> that you could consider, you know, somebody you want to emulate? Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, he, I saw on Twitter, he he did it. Somebody was interviewing him about this rest and rest stuff. These guys goes, he goes, mm -hmm. resting? He goes, you're playing in the NBA. Yep. I go, maybe if you're a coal miner or somebody that works in the mines, you might need to take a day to rest. But they, he goes, this is the NBA. They had an interview the other day between Shaq and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And they're talking about this rest period that guys take. And Kareem goes, yeah, he said, if I had the, <laughs> if I had the rest time like these guys do, I could have played another 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, how much time do you usually take off? And... Uh, Kareem goes, oh, I usually took two weeks off. Shaq goes, I took two months. <laughs> but so, well, and then the Vikings have won what five in a row. Yeah, Mr. Dobbs is doing his doing his thing, and I, you know, it's great that to see that he's doing well. But I think you got to give credit to the coach on this one. So, oh yes, definitely. Kevin O'Connell's done a masterful job. Yeah. You know, of course, Minnesota, two Minnesota sports fans, we wait for the other shoe to fall. Right. So is it going to happen against Denver? Well, I hope they beat. I mean, that would be nice to beat Denver, and then they have Chicago, I think, on Monday night. Yep, and then Detroit. So right. well, Green or, Bay's or, um, Green Bay's in there Vegas. somewhere, and then Oakland. Oh, yeah, Vegas is in there, and yeah, almost said the dirty word. So, Oakland. yeah, well, whatever. All right, but hey, uh, we've All come right. to the end of another show for Mike Egan. I'm Gary Jimbetti. We'll see you again next week on Home Team Advantage. For over 25 years, U.S. Bank, located at 211 East Howard Street in Hibbing, Minnesota, has provided office and studio space for Hibbing Public Access Television. We are thankful for their ongoing support.